Hey, this is Adam from Sumitomo Drive Technologies, and today we're going to go over the installation of our taper grip bushing on our Buddy Box products. The taper grip bushing is Sumitomo's offering for a keyless shaft locking device. Uh, it, it works very well once it's installed properly. We get a lot of questions, I can't remove it, or I'm slipping, or the taper grip bushing is backing out of the bore. We wanted to make sure we, you guys knew how to install one of these taper grip bushings, so we went through a whole process video and here it is. Always remember when working with equipment like this, always want to wear your proper PPE, whether it's safe steel toe boots, safety glasses, gloves, and depending on your location, your electrical lockout tag out procedures. Here are the tools we'll be using today for our taper grip bushing install. The most important being degreaser and anti-seize paste. First you want to remove the taper grip bushing from the reducer by unscrewing it counterclockwise. Once removed, you go ahead and take the degreaser and clean and dry all the surfaces, especially the threaded area of the bushing itself, as well as the bore of the reducer. Once everything's clean, you can go ahead and add a slight amount of anti-seize paste to the ends of the threads of the taper grip bushing. That way, once it's installed, the anti-seize paste spreads throughout the entire thread without being too much and getting onto the driven shaft equipment. The anti-seize keeps the taper grip bushing from fretting onto the bore. That way it is easier for removal later down the line. Here you want to make sure the bolts are completely loose, not touching the thrust collar. Once that's confirmed, you can go ahead and set the gap. This is the most critical step in the installation of a taper grip bushing. Once that gap is set to roughly a millimeter, you can move on and prep the shaft for install. Clean and dry the driven piece of equipment shaft and you're ready to mount the reducer. Next for the torque arm mounting bolt, using the supplied washers and bushings, you want to isolate the torque arm itself with the rubber bushings from the framing of the equipment. Making sure that no piece of the equipment interferes with the reducer during operation as well. Any interference could cause premature reducer failure. Once tightened down, you should be able to rotate one of the rubber bushings by hand. Any tighter than that is too tight. For demonstration purposes, we are using a slightly shorter driven shaft but your shaft most likely will protrude through the end of the taper grip bushing. You could always reference the O&M manual for your proper TT dimension for your size unit. And then you can begin tightening the bolts down in a star pattern. Referencing the O&M manual for the final torque value, break it into three equal parts and set each torque with your final torque being the set value as outlined in the manual. Always want to make sure we're using a calibrated torque wrench as well. During our torquing sequence here as shown, we did have the shaft rotating a little bit. More than likely your shaft won't be rotating as there's more items in play. This is just a floating shaft on two mounted bearings, so your shaft won't be turning as easy as ours did. So the taper grip bushing is Sumitomo's keyless locking device. Charlie Brown has been called to the principal's office. <laughs> uh, what was I talking about again? Taper grip bushing. Um,